Hello and thank you for staying with us. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin and I've got my great and amazing co-anchors with me, Benny Ak and Ife Omai. Hello. How you doing? Hiya. How's it going? <sighs> We're still holding up. You know. And having faith. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So uh, moving on to the main story, co-founder um, of Iroko TV, Jason Njoko, recounts his mother's experience after she contracted coronavirus. He revealed his 73-year-old mother was tested four times before she finally got a positive result. And even though she also had an underlying illness, she was able to survive. He also stated that getting accurate results is not a Nigerian issue, but a global one. Mm. Mm. It was very... Um I was very happy reading her his story. I didn't add the two of them together at first. Like I didn't know it was like Iroko TV Unjoku, um, until I saw the last picture with her in it. So I was very excited to see that she was, you know, she's well. It's one of those cases where like it's not supposed to be because she's older. Um, I, however, wish that it was in Nigeria because then I can have more faith in our health system. But um, we are getting wins here, no doubt. Um, but you know, each win, every every win is a win. Is a win, right? Because it's people's yeah. lives that we're talking about. So I'm happy for them. I really am. And I'm just hoping the NCDC can come out and say more about um, to me in particular. Like so far, we have as of today, we have many um, recorded cases and still um, like two two deaths. Um, and then people in recovery already. I'm still interested in knowing the process. People discharge. You know, people. Yeah, I saw. I saw a, a, um, a pictorial representation of what the process is like to test people for COVID-19. And in, in the life of me, my mind, like if this is really what people need to go through to get tested, it's it's pretty scary. Mm. You know, um, and so there, there's still a whole lot that needs to be done as in an area of testing. Do, do I think we have more cases, uh, more cases, unconfirmed cases that has been reported? Yes. And the availability of those test kits is just the issue right now. Um, private individuals, people used to be in government are coming out to donate millions in this. And I'm just wondering at the end of the day, I hope those more to be accounted for and they can be used to get more of this test kit for people actually to get tested. Let it be as easy as going in there to run a test for malaria, mm. you know. And so whereby our hospitals are not even being, people are supposed to attend to you in hospitals, they're also scared for their lives, which, which they should be, because they're the people attending to people who might come um, thinking they have this, this virus. And so they're also thinking about their own safety. And so as much as possible, the government owes it at this point in time to make this, this test kit available as, as quickly as possible and as much as possible. And not just only to hospitals, maybe have designated centers where people can go in and get themselves tested to know if they're positive or negative. So aside from um, even getting more testing centers, I, I feel like the NCDC needs to help us reduce the tension and fear because people are legit scared. I know there are people who still don't believe or who are bothered about what they will eat rather than talking about the virus. But um, I, don't, I don't understand the idea of taking away the people that have tested negative out of their graphics representation. So right now, all you see is this is the number of confirmed cases and then this is total number of deaths. Why not somewhere still maintain and add the number of people that have been discharged so that that could form a level of hope for people you cannot just take that out totally and I feel like just that's how it's, keep um, that's how it's been reported everywhere like even america all the all the other international news i've seen that's how they report it no no, no. They, they, keep, report, they tell you people who have tested um, um who have recovered as well but right now they, we are not doing I've, that and I've when never, we started seen, i have seen on, on that CNN, even on they, say, CNN, they say the amount you know, of people they say the amount of deaths mm -hmm. They say the amount of the amount of um, cases that they've had in the, the amount of cases that they have they have had in um, America at the moment the number mm -hmm. they have they, they they don't put the discharge people in there I have mm -hmm. ne I've never seen that okay this Recovered is the amount of numbers is the discharge people that is what yeah it and means. then deaths as well CNN is not NCDC so if you go to a platform a website um, is it should I say who right now you will see the number of people that have been discharged all over the world or that have tested negative well, yeah. are you saying that so NCDC I'm talking doesn't about put, they um, used to but now they, they 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 decided to take it out so I'm saying it is important for people to know that information as well because for people to come online to say I got better we've, we've read two threads right now and of course we have people that are private and don't want to put their business on social media it's also important for them to maintain that it's not going to take anything from them to just add a line in their graphics because they took it away themselves right you know again that's like what what, what what's the use for that you're mm. the, you're the center for disease control so it, it behoves you to let people know people have recovered from this thing I think that in a way will actually repose hope and confidence in in the populace so where you don't so where you don't necessarily well. tell us how many people have recovered from it all you tell us is the number of um, 
positive cases or suspected cases and then um, death, um, you still leave room for people to get to, to panic and really tell themselves, you know what I mean, um, there's really no hope for us. So mm -hmm. I think it, it, will, it will repose confidence and hope in people if NCDC can go back to that, to that, um, to that bar. It's almost and like some it, fees, everyone. You know, and well, some people are saying, you're, you're mm. saying that, oh, we need to have more faith. While some people are saying we need to even emphasize the fear more because people, a lot of people are still not believing. No, it's I, think like we, I, I think we should play down the fear. I mean, I, 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 I think I, we should play down the fear because many people, because I, for me, I still believe around the world that many people died from the panic and the fear of this than actually the, 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 the virus. The 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 yes, down. fear and panic can it's kill you. Not, I don't I mean, think you can put you that know, into So at the end of the day, I think they should downplay the fear and tap it what, it, what they need to do and stay safe. I don't know if it's fear you know. that is the right word to use. I don't think fear is effective, but I think people still need to be educated and understand that it's a real Part thing. Part of the I education like is also knowing that people are recovering. Of course. So of course. that's basically what I'm saying. I'm not of saying that there is no coronavirus or there is. Mm -hmm. I'm saying revert back to your former templates and let us know the number of people that are being discharged. Because right now you say we have 139, right? But still from your conversation, it's clear two that deaths. about two dead, it's clear, and from that same 139. Yes. So it's yes. also clear that about 20 people or thereabouts have tested negative. So we need to have that figures yeah. on that graphics that, that goes viral before we now get to the thread, now seeing the breakdown and all that. There's a graphics that is going viral whenever they put it out there. So, okay. I just hope that they listen and do the right thing. But moving on, Paul Okoye reacts after an ungrateful follower complained about the money he sent for coronavirus lockdown. So <laughs> he shared um, this on his um, Instagram story. So apparently he said, person said, um, what is this going to do for me? And he's trying to say, I'm not the government. I don't know you from anywhere. I'm just doing the little that I can and sharing it among um, everyone. But please, if it's not okay, send me back my money. And then um, he blocks the person. So I like that he didn't put the person's handle out there mm. as well, because it would be terrible for that person. <laughs> well, he, he did say he doesn't know the he doesn't know the follower. You know what I mean? And I think Nigerians we just have this this mentality, this self self entitlement mentality. We feel um, some people owe something. No, nobody really owes you anything. Paul mm -hmm. Koya worked for his money, and so if he decided as an ordinary Nigerian out there decide to um, reach out to people and just to alleviate um, whatever suffering or um, pain people might be going through this moment. No matter what it gives, even if it's one thousand naira, it's his money. Mm -hmm. you, it doesn't owe you a dime, you know. And so I was, I was talking to a friend just before we came on there on the phone about how people also reacted to the fact that um, Jagaban donated two hundred million naira. I'm mm. like, is this money? It doesn't owe you that. It's not the government. What was the reaction? Because I mean, the reaction I saw <laughs> is rather funny than saying people it's not enough. People were calling him out that I mean, he should, he should do more than what he did. They, oh, they really? expected more from him. Okay. He's not. You don't. He doesn't owe you any money. He's yeah. not the federal government of Nigeria. And so, he, as an individual, decided to give you two hundred million as his own support for this. The least we can do is be appreciated. Mm -hmm. You know, and so at this point in time, for every other celebrity that's out there reaching out to people, doing stuff for people, no matter what it is you get from them, 1,000, 2,000, it is still money. It yeah, still it will is. go a long way to help you get something and put in your house. So um, no, no feeling of sense entitlement this time cuts it across in any way. Nobody owes you anything at this point in time. If for anything, I should be selfish at this point in time. Think about me and make sure I don't run out of my supply and my going, stock. Right? Yeah. You know. Agreed. I mean, agreed. It's self entitlement is not just a Nigerian thing. It's everyone, every human has that to a certain degree. I would say though that sometimes I feel like I'm not saying that this. I'm not saying this to the follower. I'm just saying in general, some people um, do this thing where they claim to be giving you help, but it's very useless help. Um, and I think, and I, I, I know, like I said, this is not has anything to do with the follower in in in, um, in conversation right now. But I'm just saying, sometimes I think that if people can help a lot more than they do sometimes. Um, I, don't, I don't think this is the situation here because he's a celebrity and he doesn't know this person from Adam. But um, if they were family members or things like that, and let's say you gave them 2,000 naira when you could give more than that and it would still cost you nothing. But the question I don't know. is, how do you know the person could give more? It's based on assumption. You don't know I think, I what think this I, person I, I mean, has. you say that a lot, but I feel like that that is a fluke in the system. Like, there's not a lot of people. It's not like I've seen all the celebrities that are roaming around with no money. Yes, there are some times where people have, like you were saying yesterday, you don't know Tokay Mark, why does it? You don't know Tokay Mark. Well, she donated 250K. So the point is that there is, there's not money from some people. Some people have it. Um, yes, I cannot calculate your budget for you, and I cannot tell you how to spend your money. But it's also nice to be able to just give um, with the decency of actually trying to solve something. I'm not saying that's, what, that's not what Pisco is trying to do. I think, if anything, he's one of the few celebrities who actually 
take those um, followers in his comment section and gives them money and stuff. But there's sometimes I've seen where like you want to give, you want to help, um, and but it, the the way it's done is ineffective. I always think about like when people give clothes and the clothes are very tattered. It's like, yeah, you're really like giving. That that's just what I'm trying to say. But I understand where he's coming from. All right, just time for a quick break. But when we return, there will be more to discuss. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I see them every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Alibaba? Alibaba. No. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dollar, everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal eye. You. Mm. Apala music is from mature minded people. Like I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! <laughs> sleeping early. Sleeping early. <laughs> This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Last, last night on social media was quite heated as fans of Ricardo Banks and Bonaboy went at each other. It all started when a Twitter user tweeted at Bonaboy saying, if you are to go on a hit battle with a fellow Nigerian artist, who would that be? Bonaboy responded saying, I don't really know what a hit battle is, but I am willing to go toe to toe with any worthy challenger lyrically musically physically however they want it and that was when ricardo banks responded tweeting a boner boy saying i am that energy i am game that energy let's get it boner boy now said you know i got too much love for you bro but didn't you see when i said worthy challenger ricky you and that was how two seconds everywhere busts <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you know, we have um, reactions on social media, but before that, Benny, go ahead. Uh, when I saw this yesterday, right, I was just, I was just laughing. I like this is typical of the boy, and I don't, I don't fault him in any way. And again, um, I think we should take it very, we should take it on the very funny side because. I wouldn't have expected anything less from Bonobo. A hit battle would be maybe what, what a rap battle is between two rappers who are trying to claim um, they own the five mics. You know, and so if you feel you're a singer, you, you can... Did you see the battle between Saz and who was the other guy? She's, uh, she's, she, she, yeah, I think that was basically what they yeah. were trying to do. You know, yeah. and so, I mean, for Ricky to have jumped on it, I, I don't necessarily think he was thinking it was much for Bonobo because if he was thinking so... Um, I don't, I don't know. And Why do you Bonner, think he's no match for Bonaboy? Um, given, given, given all the accolades Bonaboy has it's right not about now, he's one, this right is now. He's one of the big, about your art I mean, and what you can do. Now we talk about hits. We talk about who's had the most single hits. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the last two years, Rick, Ricky has been pretty quiet musically. After he left, uh, maybe, maybe record, we've only been able to have like one, two, three singles from him mm -hmm. in, in the space of like two, three years. And Bon has turned out so many singles. I Ricky mean, left maybe in last year. Was it last year? Yes. I was thinking it was late mm -mm. 20, 2018. It should be early 2019. You know? or and so we've not, had, we've not had so many hit singles from, 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 um, from Ricky. We can count how many singles was, he dropped last year. And so when it comes to that, Bonner, Bonner tops it all. You know? And so Bonner was being his typical you know, arrogant self when he tell him, you know, I mean, he laughed. It, it, there were three smileys of laugh before mm -hmm. he now said, you know, I mean, hey, I mean, you missed out the part where I said, you know, a, a worthy challenger. And again, it's a given. Bonner, Bonner, is, Bonner is bigger. Bonner is bigger than Ricky. Yes, you know, agreed. But and African that, continent, does, because you know. somebody's bigger than somebody else doesn't mean that they're not a worthy challenger. Well, so he, I'm, well, Bonner didn't see him as he didn't expect that the, the whoever the challenger was going to be was going to be Ricky. So, so who you know? was he expecting? Yeah, who, I, I don't know anyone else. Because the Maybe. question is, yeah. the question is, he, the person specifically, specifically said Nigerian artist, yeah. right? And he said he's ready for any worthy contender. Yeah. So I need to take these reactions. But before yeah. that, who, in your opinion, now since you think. Ricardo Bank is it's, not a yeah. match for Bonaboy. Yeah. No, Ricardo Bank is not a match for Bonaboy. Since you think so, who is it? Who is um, it? What do you I, I could put, but Bonner could come in a line of people in the likes of, um, now maybe we we'll argue that, put, put him in the lines of Two-Face Adibia. Ah! 
Yes, put him allowed to visit Libya. That's a put him. That's a no, that is not. That, no, that, no, that, hold on, hold on. Before we get you said, please, please, let me please. take the reaction. Oh my you. goodness, Wait, my heart just said it. it. <laughs> Ashiwaju Larry says, "What Ricardo Banks has achieved in the music industry, Bonaboy Boy can never match his achievements if they removed all the fellow tracks he sampled." Bam. Then at Israel, at Israel Annie says, "Bonaboy Boy that only samples other people's song, just called a creative songwriter like Ricardo Bank and unworthy challenger." If we are being honest. In terms of original and quality content, Bonaboy no reach wiki. Um, popular journalist, music journalist Joy Akan says Bonaboy was cruel to Ricardo Banks. It is it isn't banned or anything that can be excused. It's just plain old disrespectful to say what he said. Um, he could have chosen to say nothing or found a better way, but that disrespect cuts too deep. His God complex is on a roll. Corey De Bello, of course, we all know Corey De Bello. He says, what are your insecurities? I mean, he actually tagged Bonaboy to say, what are your insecurities? Even giants feel vulnerable sometimes. And then Paterankin comes in to say, instead, make we artists come together and contribute money to support people. This ones way no day online. No. They understand what giveaway mean. Um, basically, saying they should gather money to go to the slum instead of just um, giving out online. And it says, um, when I did here, they talk about the V and the wise up or whatever he was trying to say. So, yeah. So, based on that reaction and your reaction, what are you going to say? I, I'm, I'm still, I'm not over um, Benny, Benny <laughs> Axe, <laughs> Two Face. How dare you, please? Bernard Boy is such that I a... Said, that I said Two Face doesn't necessarily mean that Bernard Boy is bigger than Two Face. No, but you, He's a one challenger. We are talking about the one challenger. So, yes, if you're talking about that, then Bernard Boy is yes. not a one challenger so for Two Face. So, Ricardo Boy doesn't come close to Bernard Boy. When it comes and to that, it doesn't. Two Face. Two Face. Bonner Boy isn't bigger than than Two Face, but Two Face would be a world challenger. Well, the cattle bank so isn't. So, you know the thing it is, I'm, I'm kind of angry at myself right now yeah. because I was too busy before we came on air that I didn't have the time to bring out the list of songs that um, Ricardo has actually released since he left Maven. And even before... We can count them. I mean... You can't, can't count them. Rora. Um, mm -hmm. What's the other one? Rora, was, Rora still remains one of his biggest hits so far. Mm. Um, then what's the other one again? There's... Oh, the, 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 the follow-up after... You're not after, a fan, of, so you wouldn't know. The follow-up after Rora, it's, it's what was played. You, We're talking you, you, about playlists, not what's on radio. You know what I mean? your ideas, Do you understand that sense. when... You said, you I'm just, not going to... Sorry to cut you. Yeah. I'm not going to downplay... Um, <clears throat> what's this guy's name now? Skibby's hustle in the industry and how he has tried to push himself. Yeah. But do you realize that his comeback or his finally blowing is a make of Ricardo on that his song? Yeah. Do you realize that? Mm, I, Do you I, want to argue that I, no, as well? No, no, I, have, I, have, I, have, I, have, I disagree to that. Without Ricardo on, on that song, that song was really? a really hit song. Without, what did Ricardo really do on that song? Let's analyze what Ricardo really said on that song. What is Bernard Boy doing on most of so the So what songs? did what did no, because Skibby saying, do on that song? Skibby, Skibby, that what did Skibby do on that Ricardo song Bank that he has not done no. on other songs that did no, not even I disagree. the hits over? Without Ricardo Bank, that song was already a hit song by how Skibby. Would you say, but how would you make that logic? All right, because the question is, what did Skibby, uh, what did Ricardo Bank really say on that song? Let's analyze what he really did on that song. Except you want to start questioning what every big artist have done on three times on that song. That's basically it. Okay, would you now so say, hold on, would you say Bonaboy did not have an influence on Zlatan? Bonaboy did not have what? An influence on Zlatan based on, what's the name of that, their song? Um, um, is it Killing Them? Killing yes. Them. Do you, would you say Bonaboy did not have an influence on Zlatan's career? The song? It's a simple question. It's a simple question. No, but ah. I want to know who owns the then song. What was I don't the point? get it. Answer the question. Do you think that Bernard Boy has no, an influence on that? I want to understand. I want to understand. No, it's a simple what, question. No, it's not a simple think? question. It is. Don't, it is. don't make me answer. I want to understand it. I will answer when I understand what she's trying to get at. Do you think right. that there is an influence given to um, Zatlan by pairing up with Bernard Boy on that music song? I still don't understand the question. Okay. Um, moving okay. on. My, my point you. is that uh, um, if you say. When, when they do a challenge, like this thing first started with, um, um, what's his name? Saz and, and uh, Cheesy, it was Cheesy, however you say his name. Now, it was obvious who won. Saz won that thing. But, and he had more songs, more hits, it was clear. But this person, Ch Ch um, Cheesy, has a lot of good music. And he Cheesy. Could, cheesy. And he had been singing, he has been working in the industry for a long time. But you cannot, like, it was obvious, right? Mm -hmm. So we're not saying that you have to be just as big. But can your qu the quality of the music that you've done, can it actually stand? And I think that, that that's where Ricardo Banks was coming from. And I feel like he has every right to do that, to say that. Anybody else you want to pair Burna Boy with, I especially see, with, especially with um, Two Face. No, it's not a competition. Oh, okay. I'm just saying he ha he, this, is, this is not about who's going to win. This is about whether or not Ricardo Banks can compete. 
that's where I'm on. I'm, I'm going on about. Mm -hmm. He can compete with Burner Boy. Will Burner Boy eat him alive? Yes. But can he compete? Then, that, is then he a he's con not a worthy contender. He is. He if, is. You just said Burner Boy is going to eat him alive. Then he's because not a worthy contender. Because if he's going to eat somebody alive, doesn't mean wouldn't always be one winner. So he's not all, a worthy, all, the, all the people it, that have, if it's, you're in it's, a matching box, and it's somebody an opinion, plays right? Anthony, Anthony, he's not whatever. a worthy. If Bonner Boy is going to eat him alive, then he's not a worthy contender. No. Um, I'm trying to remember the last um, boxing, big boxing match we all watched. Um, please, someone help me with their name now, because I'm not a sports person. But, yeah. Uh, what's their name now? You God, watched. The, God, the, God, the, God, the under, wait, the under wait, 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 and um, hey, what's this white dude's name with a black man's name? Fury. 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 Okay, so would would you say Fury at um, Wilder Life? At Wilder Alive, mm. if it did, Wilder was no match of Fury if you ever watched their first match. <sighs> no, I'm telling you that Wilder was never okay, going to win. Move on because Wilder, yeah, Wilder like, we'll, was no we'll, match we'll for Fury. Yeah. But personally, I feel like Ricardo is a worthy cont contender. Course. This is my own personal opinion I right agree. now. I feel like he is a worthy contender. I feel like he has done a lot. Um, professionally and musically in the industry. Oh, to, yeah. um, when it comes to writing music, oh, I'm please. sorry, Bonner Boy is, cannot stand anywhere close to Ricardo Banks. Why? Maybe after the show, you go and read up on Bonner Boy because clearly you, you are not. Like, so, but Bonaboy's basically, music. basically, <laughs> greatest still, artists in the world have their songs written by other people. That, is that what some... makes an artist? Oh, makes so an artist? No, I'm sorry. So, I mean, so what makes even, an artist? Even, I'm sorry. What even your Beyonce artist? has songs written exactly. for her. Okay, what are you talking about? But what so makes an artist? So you can because and say because he doesn't write his song doesn't That's make him an artist. I have not said that. I have not said that. Because Ricardo Banks doesn't have that many songs, he can't compete. I said, I'm talking, no, no, no. I said singles drop. No, you're confusing yourself. I talked about singles dropped. About that Bonner in the last couple of years, I've had so many singles okay, drop that over, over, over Ricardo like Band. And, and it's and had the jam. most played song, even top ever. songs. Over Ricardo Banks, you can't take that away from Bonner. Okay. And you can't take that. You can't take the quality of writing and and, and in, in depth quality, beautiful music that wrote Ricardo Banks. Ricardo Banks. Yeah. But what, what we're talking about writing. writing. Why are we talking about artists and music? Musically and physically, we're talking about well, writing. In my opinion, it's still my opinion. Ricardo is not. And let us okay. have yeah, ours too. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Okay, so still on Bonner Boy. Cizamila has is this Cizamila? Yeah, Cizamili, right? Cizamili has responded to a thread from Bonaboy. Responded to a video where Cizamili said he wrote eighty percent of Bonaboy's hit single on Dilo. Bonaboy um, threatened to deal with Cizamili if he catches him before COVID nineteen does. Now Cizamili has come forward to say that in August twenty eighteen he was invited to a studio session by his record label Aristocrat to work on a project with another label mate to feature Bonaboy. According to him, the record session lasted four days. He also revealed that the beat was made by Kel P at the time for another artist who was yet to voice on the beat. He maintains that he vibed 50 to 60 percent of the song and that Bonner Boy definitely changed some words in the vibe laid down for him. He also expressed displeasure at the way Nigerian artists um, react about songwriters working with them, stating that there are several international artists who don't write their songs at all. Yeah. You know, I was privileged to have this minute sometime. That was like two years ago, two years ago on radio, where he made this um, disclosure. And it, it actually caused a, a few issues on the blogs, you know, because he said he wasn't supposed to, supposed to disclose the people he writes songs for. And I had a problem with it. Like, why? I mean, if you're writing songs for people, then they should be giving you credit. But based on, you know, it, no, it's possible you know. for that to happen if you signed that agreement. Yeah. But yeah. based on what he came out with right now, there wasn't an agreement, yeah. which is yeah. why this back and forth is even happening yeah. right now. So he can say it anywhere he wants to say it. Yeah, yeah but he, in that interview, he also shot himself in the foot because he was like, when, when he was asked straightly, did you write the song? He like, he cannot disclose. I like, do you have an NDA? He said no. I like, so if you're writing songs for people and they're not giving you credit, don't you think that takes away from your own intellectual property? And so I don't know what, what the what the back the backdrop fallout will have been between him and Bonobo on this, why he's coming out to say this. He wasn't coming but, out now. The you know, video, no, he he's wasn't coming written, out now. A video surfaced of, yeah. of, an, old of interview an interview at CTFM, on, on, actually. On Bonobo acting like a child And he on said, Twitter, yeah, he said he wrote 80% um, in that, 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 that video. Because even when they said, did you totally write? He said, no, no. I wrote 80%. Yeah. Right? And um, that was when Bonaboy came out to say, oh, if COVID, I don't know how you wish someone that, that if COVID doesn't catch him before he does, then he knows that he's going to deal with him. Which is why Cizamili is coming well, out yeah. to respond now to Credit Air to say, yeah, I worked with you in the studio on this song. Um, 
of course, you changed the song because you're an artist, you wrote some things, but we cannot take that away. And he also admitted in what he wrote that um, based on where he was in the industry at the time and his knowledge on intellectual property, yeah. there wasn't any signing. So yeah. if there was, he wouldn't have to be doing this explanation. He would just have to put this out there and yeah. say, this is what we signed. Again, there are cases where if, if you write a song for someone and they outrightly buy the song of you, you're not entitled to anything, not credit, no nothing. And so, um, since a million needs to really make it clear what exactly, I mean, whatever, th there's got to be some kind, there's got to be he some said kind, there was you know, and so, um, but, but not threatening him, do I think that's the way to go? No, I mean, um, he wrote, he wrote one of your biggest songs, and so he deserves all the accolades and credit he should get for that, and so resolving to threaten his life or whatever he should going to do to him afterwards, um, doesn't cut it. And this thing goes back to a whole lot of artists, a lot of artists, since a million is reading songs for, that they're not necessarily giving him the credit for big top names in Nigeria, female artists. And, and when you ask him, he's so, he's so, the word is, he's so, um, he shrouds it a lot. Like, you know, I cannot talk about it. And so if it's an outright pay, you say they outrightly pay you. And so you can't talk anything about a song. But if you wrote it and um, both of you have, a, have some kind of understanding or an NDA, you also say so. But I'm saying for most of the time, we feel at the end of the day in Nigeria, most Nigerian artists feel if somebody writes a song for you, it makes you less of an artist. International artists do it. They have songwriters. Not everybody who is a beautiful singer is a beautiful songwriter. And so Sister Millie is one of those artists who has written so many beautiful songs. So cover Sister Millie's song. But he released it for Wizkid. I mean, Wizkid, um, Sister Millie, and the rest of them did that song. But he would never come out and say, I did the song, I wrote the song. I think song, the news you know? about the, this topic for me is more about Bernard Boyan and Cezamini. Like, because Nigerians don't understand the idea or the art of songwriting and, and other people performing their music, I don't want to dwell on that. I think for me, the issue here is Bernard Boy and his attitude towards other people. Like, the way he interacts with other people is so disgusting. Um, first of all, if somebody writes your music, it's almost like he doesn't understand art. And I think to a point, I'm beginning to see like he doesn't even understand himself. Bernard Boy is huge, huge, huge. But the more he talks about himself, it's like, it's kind of like a beautiful girl that has a nasty mouth like you just start turning more ugly it doesn't take away from the fact that you're still beautiful but the way we see you is lesser and i think that's what Bernard boy is doing with himself right now as an artist you should surely understand that because somebody else wrote your mu the music for you it doesn't take away from the fact that you still killed the performance but he's so insecure in himself that he can't see that and he has to bring somebody down and then threaten the other person and then go on and make a rant people write music all the time and for him to come out and say it on the radio station that he wrote music for, for Bernard boy i don't think there's anything wrong with it i don't think it's anything um, bad or like it's, it's trying to take away anything from from Burna Boy. I, even people that ha I've seen like Kerry Hilson, Neo, um, Sia that writes for people, even when they have been paid off, they still say it. Yeah. Because that's their job. What I'm saying. Except, you have to have except your there is a non-disclosure agreement that, there. Whether you are paid off and I don't know when or people are doing non-disclosures for, for making music. I feel like that's even in itself illegal. I don't, it's only on this table that I'm hearing that you can do non-disclosures for writing music because that's somebody's career. It's like saying that, oh, I'm a, I'm a makeup artist but then I, I, I would sign away saying that I did your makeup for you I've never heard that so mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that if the audience wants to stigmatize it and the artist wants to stigmatize that's fine but it doesn't make we sense. have to go right now thank you for watching and remember you can catch up on this conversation by visiting our YouTube channel at plus TV Africa and also please do remember to subscribe you can also watch it time on also TV and in London on Ben television my thank you as always to go to my co-uncles Ife Omai and Benny Ark and the entire production team thank you for watching plus TV Africa's tea time my name is Elsie Godwin do stay with us.